Hey there, and welcome back to Retire Your Way with ILG Financial. My name is Chase Lopez, this is Dave Lopez, and we're both registered investment advisors for ILG Financial. Hi, right, welcome, and today we're gonna to talk about some estate planning questions that we get all the time. This one is, should I be gifting my children money to somehow save taxes, or right. if there's an advantage to that? So let's jump right into that, Chase. We hear this quite a bit, folks say, a family member or a friend told me mm -hmm. that I should be giving my children money each year so that I can avoid taxes with it or right. to avoid some future taxes down the road. There's an annual limit. It's right now it's $17,000 a that's year exactly you can it. gift to your kids, but that's a very misunderstood rule. Let's kind of talk about what that is mm -hmm. and then we can kind of talk about if it's a good idea or how you could make a decision if it's for you. Sure. So to your point, Dave, um, the $17,000 a year, at least that's what it is for 2023, right. is uh, basically the amount that you can give to really whoever, right? Your kids most of the time is the, is the play there. Um, but you can give it to them and it won't count against your estate. And that's estate. So E-S-T-A-T-E, -T -E, right? Not state taxes, estate. It doesn't count against your estate tax exclusion. And all that means is when you uh, when your heirs inherit your estate, they are excluded from plan paying estate tax on a certain amount of that of, of that estate. Right. Yeah, so let's let me jump in. So that's a great point because mm -hmm. this does get very confusing to mm -hmm. people. Remember, this is a whole separate tax. Yes. A lot of you know we're used to paying income tax. Right. You're giving money to your children. You're not avoiding any income tax. There's right. no way to do that. Right. So, for example, you can't pull money out of your IRA and give it to your children to avoid the tax on that IRA. Correct. You've got to pull the money out, pay the tax. Mm -hmm. If it's money just sitting in the bank, you've already paid tax on it. You're giving it to your kids. Estate tax with an E is another tax on top of income tax that some people have to pay. And to right. your point, Chase, the government said, hey, you don't, we're gonna give you an exemption. Right. The first, and right now, as of we speak, it's about $13 million each for each. you and a spouse. So if you're right. married, it's 26 million for you as a couple. The first $26 million of your estate is not subject to any estate tax, Correct. only the money over that. So if you don't have a net worth or don't think your net worth is going to grow by the time of your death to over $13 million, then this gifting every year won't affect you or your children in any way. Now that number is going to change. We'll talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so if the way that the uh, 2017 tax code was written, it actually had what's called a sunset clause inside of there. And we've talked about that briefly in other videos. But all that means is if Congress does nothing with the current tax code and they just let it uh, go as it currently is, then in January 1st of 2026, it will revert back to the old tax code previous to that 2017 change. So that 26 million for a couple that Dave was talking about, 13 million each, will be reduced at that point to uh, adjusted for, it starts at uh, 5 million, but it's adjusted for inflation. So around that time, we should think it's about six to $7 million each. So you could think anywhere between 10 to $14 million exclusion yeah, about, for a couple. About half, yeah, right? Exactly. About 26 mm -hmm. million to a probably about 12 to 13 yeah. million. Mm -hmm. So, but again, even with that, yeah. if you're not expecting your estate to be near six or seven million each, right. gifting money doesn't, you don't affect anything tax wise. Right. Right. Now, with that said, mm -hmm. why would be a good reason to, uh, to give someone chase? Why would I want to start doing that? Yeah. So there's a couple reasons, right? I guess the, really the first big reason would be if you are worth uh, between that, you know, 13 million each, or let's just use the couple as an example. If you as a couple, your estate is already worth $26 million, and you're thinking, hey, this exclusion most likely is going to go down. Well, then you might want to take advantage of that full exclusion while you're still alive, right? So you could gift $26 million to your heirs, as an example, uh, and take advantage of that full exclusion. Now, it precludes you from using that exclusion for the rest of your life. But if you're thinking, hey, this exclusion is going to go down, cut in half, right? Well, then you certainly want to take advantage of it while it's still at this elevated number. Yeah, that's uh, a great example. If you take advantage of the exclusion today, yes. let's just say for the, for the video, you're single. 
Correct. Thirteen million dollars you could give to your son today mm -hmm. and pay no estate tax right. ever on that thirteen million. Right. Right. And then in twenty twenty six, as Chase mentioned, that this exemption drops down to six million. You still got the thirteen million because that's what it was when you gave it. So right. a lot of people will give the money away now, knowing it's going to drop. That's exactly. the first reason you might give money away, whether it's a, a yearly amount or a lump sum. Right. Right. What's another reason? Yeah. So if you think possibly your estate's going to grow to that exclusion amount, right? With whatever we kind of think that exclusion amount will be in the future. Well, then you can take advantage of the seventeen thousand that we were talking about uh, prior to. Basically, you could take seventeen thousand dollars. You could give it to your heirs, and that doesn't account doesn't count against that uh, that thirteen million dollar exemption that you have for the rest of your life. So, a great example would be if uh, if you were if you and your wife wanted to give money to your son. The example that you were talking about, you each could write your son a check for seventeen thousand dollars each. So, thirty four thousand dollars going to uh, your son. And that wouldn't count against the $13 million exclusion that you have yeah. against estate tax. Now, this can be real confusing, and this mm -hmm. is why I think people spend a lot of time giving that money and they don't need to. Right. Is all that means is you're avoid, you don't, have, the government's saying, to us that's a small enough amount that you don't have to bother listing it on your tax return. Right. So it won't count against the six and a half or thirteen million dollar exclusion right if your estate is nowhere near that mm -hmm. well then it doesn't matter you're not limited to giving your children seventeen thousand dollars exactly. a year you can give them as much money as you want even above the exemption right right but as long as you're under the exemption there's still no taxes all they're saying with this seventeen thousand dollar number is any gifts in a year under seventeen thousand you don't have to write them down. You don't have to put them on your tax return. If you give more than seventeen thousand, there's a separate form on your right. taxes, a gift tax uh, disclosure form mm -hmm. that says, "Hey, I gave Chase thirty thousand dollars this year," and right. they will count thirty thousand minus seventeen right. against my thirteen million dollars. That's right. how that kind of works. Right. So I guess the big takeaway would be if you're not in these uh, estate ranges, right, anywhere between this, you know, six and a half million to thirteen million for a single person. Yeah, I would say six and a half million up. Because right. We, we're pretty confident it's going to drop. Fair. Fair. Yep. Then it really it, the seventeen thousand is really doesn't doesn't really. You're not achieving much. anything. Exactly. Exactly. Tax savings wise. Now there's one more reason you might do it, mm -hmm. which is very plausible. Mm -hmm. You might feel like, look, I know they're dropping it in 2026 to six and a half million. Right. I think they could drop it further, and there have been times historically when that exclusion has been from thirteen million. It's been as low as one million dollars. Right. So if you're worth one or two million dollars, and you don't have confidence that the government's going to leave the exclusion up there, you might want to take some of the exclusion now. Right. And one way you can do that without counting against the exclusion is giving your family members seventeen thousand a year, mm -hmm. but you can give more than that to take advantage of the whole thirteen million if you wanted to. Yeah, exactly. And then another reason why folks is kind of the second reason folks will begin to gift uh, money or assets to their heirs is because they feel like probate's going to be a big deal, right? We hear about that a lot. Probate, uh, probate might hang up the assets or it might be, make it difficult for uh, your heirs to inherit those assets. There's a couple of ways to kind of avoid that, isn't there? Yeah, that's not a reason I would do it. Right, right. You right, can avoid right. probate without having to give up control of your money. Exactly. Right, so this really goes to the, this, this will be a good way to end the video. Mm -hmm. What are some reasons maybe that you wouldn't need, want to give your money to your kids? So the right. first one would be, if you're doing it not for taxes, but to avoid probate, you can avoid probate on your accounts, your bank account or your investment right. account, by just listing the child as the heir. And right. if it's a retirement account, it's a beneficiary form. Right. It'll avoid probate. Mm -hmm. If it's not a retirement account or an annuity or life insurance policy or a 401k, any of those accounts all have beneficiary forms that mm -hmm. avoid probate. Mm -hmm. If it's not one of those, if it's a regular account, often referred to as a non-qualified account, right Chase, mm -hmm. non-qualified, your bank account, your brokerage account, you can get a form called a T O D T is in Tom O D transfer on death form. Some banks or, or uh, institutions call it a P O D pay on death, and again that avoids probate. So don't give up control of your money just to avoid probate. 
get with your tax professional or your financial professional for other alternatives. That's number one. What's the second reason you may not want to give up control of your money? Well, I think that you kind of said it in the uh, in the question there. We're giving we're literally giving up control of the asset, right? So a great example is we have folks come into our office and they ask, "Well, should I uh, list my heir on the title of my home?" We certainly get that a lot, don't we? Well, if you do that, right? you are losing control of the asset to your heir. And if they were to get married in the future, right, the married couple would now have control over that asset. And then, you know, if we unfortunately play that scenario out a little bit more, let's say they get divorced, that could be included in whatever divorce proceedings, uh, proceedings happen in the future. So that's kind of the, big, the biggest thing, right, is we're losing control over that asset. Yeah, and, uh, or, if, or if your child is sued, Right. Oh, yeah. It's a right. great point. And they have to declare, or they don't run a business very well. They declare bankruptcy. Right. All right. They've lost that asset. Right. The other thing, which is a prickly conversation, but it happens more than you would like to know, mm -hmm. is that I know that your kids are going to be different than everyone else's, but people change and people get married and then they change. And regardless of what handshake agreement you have with your children about the house you've titled in their name or money you've given to them, right. once you give it to them, it's theirs. Right. And if they decide to spend it a different way than you think was agreed to, that's their right. It is now their money. So you literally have given up control of the money. So you want to be very clear before you do that, that you're willing to live with whatever consequences of change decisions those kids have. Right. The last reason, which is a biggie, that a lot of people miss out on is there's a special part of the tax code yeah. that is very tax friendly to you passing on money to your heirs. It's called a step up in value. And what it means is your regular investment accounts or real estate right. or stocks, if you haven't sold that asset when you die, then your child can inherit or heir can inherit the asset and they don't have to pay tax on any of the profit that right. is unrealized gain. That's the word in our industry. And because you haven't sold the stock. So I'll give you a quick example. You buy a stock, Apple stock, for $100, you hold it forever, now it's worth $1,000, mm -hmm. a gain of $900, right. right Chase? You've never paid tax on that $900 because you haven't sold the stock. Right. If you sell the stock, what happens? You pay tax on the 900. You pay tax on the 900. Mm -hmm. If you don't sell the stock and you die and your child inherits the stock, they can sell that stock the next day and pay no taxes. Their basis, what they bought the stock for, mm -hmm. steps up, yep. that's why they call it that, from $100 that you paid to the price of the stock on the date of your death, which is 1000 So right. they could sell it for 1000 and pay no tax. A huge right. tax right. savings. Mm -hmm. If you gift a child uh, an asset, take that same scenario, at the time now that the stock has gone from 100 to $300, right. and now you gift it to the child, there's no taxes due on that time, mm -hmm. but now the stock grows to 900, 1,000. Right. The child eventually sells it after you die. Mm -hmm. He pays tax on everything from 300, exactly. the day you gifted it, to 1,000. So right. you lose this huge tax advantage. It applies to stocks and right. holdings. It applies to real estate, so when you, add your child onto your house, right. they kind of lose the step up. Exactly. If you give, put the, change the house into your child's name just to avoid probate, right. they lose the step up if it appreciates much after you give it to them. So quite a few reasons not to do that. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest kind of takeaway from the video today is there's just a lot of misnomers out there as to uh, how to gift and when to gift, and it, even if you should gift, right? Even if you should gift. Um, and that's why we always encourage folks, get with your estate planner, your estate attorney, get with your financial planner, your tax professional, to see exactly how all of these rules would uh, go for your specific situation. Before you gift. Exactly, before right. you gift, before you gift. Um, so go ahead. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button there down below. You can hit that bell as well. That will notify you of any future videos. And we'll talk to you soon.